Hi everybody, I'm Alex from Adore TV, and I've got a new video today, so let's hop straight into it. So, the last video I did on the channel on Zen 3's improved esports performance generated a ton of feedback. Most of it was positive, and many were interested to see in a follow-up with a lot more CPUs tested. So today I'll be showing off a bunch of modern CPUs here. However, before I get any deeper, let's take a look at some of that feedback. Many of you were disappointed that I was not Jim, as I kind of debated you guys with my title and my big manlet energy. However, most of the comments were happy to see testing done on different games, or a realistic scenario where 1080p low would actually happen. Others were pretty happy to see the 240Hz plus theme. Others wanted to see more Intel parts in, or critiques on my testing methodology, which were really helpful, specifically in Apex Legends and Valorant, with some pretty strong critiques on me using the shooting gallery and the test range. Others wanted to see more 6-core comparisons, and some rightly pointed out my audio levels being too low. Please let me know if that's improved. So, in our aim today, it's to find out what the best CPU is for esports in this class, which is arguably the most popular class for people to buy gaming CPUs, and what a difference the current models have over previous ones. This would possibly illustrate what current owners have to gain by upgrading to newer generations of CPUs. The games we test here are all competitive or esports titles. These are all rather popular. So in the previous video, you can see my explanation as to why I'm doing this, but in short, competitive games are a majority of the most played games today, and aren't represented enough in my opinion by other reviewers or benchmarkers. The goal here is to see how often we can get CPUs that perform above 240 FPS, as competitive gamers rarely like to go below their monitor's refresh rate. Sometimes they even want to double it. As for the video itself, I'd originally intended to use my i9-9900K, as well as the i5-11400 and Ryzen 5 1600 in addition to the 3600X and 5600X. However, my i9 seems to have gone on to greener pastures, so I swapped it out for the i5-9600K at 4.8GHz. This is the highest I get it stable through all of the game tests here, and I had been sent an i5-11600K from Intel, which I used in lieu of the 11400. This will get its own dedicated video in a few days. So what we have here is a battle of these upper mid-tier sort of 6-core parts. As for the addition of the first gen 1600, I think it's a worthy stand-in for any of the Zen and Zen Plus CPUs, like the 1600 AF or 1600, since they all perform about the same. But let's jump into our test systems. For the 3600X and 5600X, I used the same B550 ROG Strix board from ASUS that I used last time, although this time the memory is clocked up a bit higher at 3733 at CL14. This is because G-Skill sent over a new kit of DDR4 4000 CL16 memory. This is because Ryzen's Infinity Clock can cause performance degradation at over 3733. I chose to leave it there. For the Z390 system, I used a Z390 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi from Gigabyte, and the memory was clocked to 4000 MHz CL16. On the Z590 system, ASRock sent over a Z590 Extreme Wi-Fi 6E, and the memory again was clocked to 4000 MHz at CL16. This is its rated speed. Finally, for my legacy Ryzen system, I used an ASRock B450 Steel Legend and a G-Skill Flare X at 3200MHz CL16. This is because first-gen Ryzen is pretty picky, and my 1600 is really picky on the kind of memory it takes. All systems were tested using an RTX 3070 Ventus from MSI, and all CPUs were cooled using a Deepcool 280EX AIO. Big thanks to Deepcool since my old NZXT Kraken X61 started failing on me, and they were kind enough to supply a new cooler on short notice. Okay, so with that out of the way, we've pretty much kept the same testing methodology from last time. However, I'm swapping a few things around. I'm only testing CSGO at 1080p. 4.3 users can see a very small jump in performance, and it just feels kind of redundant. I've also included a bot match in game. I've also swapped out Heroes of the Storm for League of Legends, since it's more popular. And I've finally, I've swapped out Rogue Company for Overwatch, since quite a few people ask for Overwatch. Okay, so let's get straight to the testing. Our first game today is Apex Legends. I've tested it a bit differently this time, and I've used the Olympus map, where you jump out of the ship overlooking the middle teleport tube that is between Hammond Labs and the Orbital Cannon. You jump out from the plane and land on that teleport tube area and run around overlooking the Orbital Cannon. 
test is done for 120 seconds, and I had originally tested on King's Crossing, which had a more significant impact on performance. However, the season ended mid-testing, and I had to retest the entire set of hardware. The game is tested with textures turned to high and everything else at low at 1080p. Starting off, we can see the 5600X is over 30% faster against the 3600X, and the old favorite 1600 is beaten by over double. The 9th gen i5 does beat out the 3600X, and the 11600K does keep quite well within 10% from the top dog at AMD. The 99th percentiles come in a bit closer, and overall this is a pretty strong showing for the Zen 3 6-core part. Next on to Call of Duty. It's tested in DX12 with all settings set to low and AA off. Looking over at the performance numbers, we can see the 5600X leading the 3600X by almost 30% on the average and the 99th percentile. The 1600 performs pretty abysmally in comparison, failing to break 100 FPS, and is being beaten by almost 120%, while the Intel parts perform closely within, with only a few percent between the older 9600K, which was about 15% slower, and the 9600K was less than 5. Both of these chips would be pretty good for the game competitively, perhaps barring their 8 core counterparts. For CSGO, I had saw some comment saying that the benchmark from the workshop was a bit unrealistic and that FPS was higher than average, although using bots is a bit heavier on the CPU leading to lower FPS. I decided to split the difference and just do both. Testing was done at medium settings at 1080p and the match with bots was done on Nuke on T-side. So the first test we have here is we can see the 5600X running far and away from the other CPUs here and it's the only one to average over 360 FPS. Again, in a real match, these FPS numbers would likely be lower. Though we can see the difference between the 5600X and the Zen 1 6 core is pretty insane, with the average being over 200 FPS faster, and the 1600 remaining under 90 FPS in the 99th percentile. Switching over to the CPU benchmark, we see the 5600X breaking almost 700 FPS on average and hitting 200 FPS on the 99th percentile. The 11600K is its closest competitor, but is still trailing by over 20%. This is followed by the 3600X and the 9600K. The 1600 is once again showing why many esports gamers just flat out refuse to buy first and second generation Ryzen parts. On to our next title, Dota 2. This was tested in a save match for 2 minutes with compute shaders on, textures set to high, and everything set to low, with the FPS limiter set to 1000. As we could see from the results, the 5600X keeps its 99th percentile right above 144 FPS and sits at about 300 FPS on average. The 11600K gets over 240 FPS and is around 20% lower, though the 99th percentiles here are close for all CPUs, excluding the 1600, which drops below 60 FPS. Hopping on to Escape from Tarkov, I tested on reserve during the day for 2 minutes with high textures, TAA on, visibility at 2000, LOD at 2, shadows at 100, and everything else set to low. Please note that when uncapping the FPS, it uses your monitor's max refresh rate. Here we see the 5600X sits close to the 165Hz maximum at 159 and its 99th percentile is 128. The 11600K keeps close, getting about 139 which is about a 14% gap, and the 9600K sits at 120 FPS. The 3600X does quite poorly here and is only slightly better than the 3600, and is only slightly better than the 1600, which I can only imagine is due to the cache improvements in Zen 3. Okay, now moving on to Fortnite. For this game, we test using the benchmark found in the Creative Islands. The game is running at low, at 1080p in DirectX 11. Here we see the 5600X is almost breaking 300 FPS on average, and is sitting just below 190 on the 99th percentile. Once again, once again, the 11600K trails by about 10 to 15 percent on the 99th percentile and average respectively. The 9600K trails by another 15 percent, and the 3600X has a rather poor showing hitting 180 and 135 FPS. The 1600 here performs kind of poorly as well. Now on to League of Legends, which is one of the most popular games out today, I tested at 1080p on low settings with the FPS set to a limit of 400. This is the highest I get it capped to. I tested a replay during one of the most intensive fights in the match over a 2 minute period. Over this benchmark we see the 5600X pulls ahead of all competitors pretty strongly here, over 50% faster than the previous gen 6 core. This is almost 3 times faster on average compared to the Ryzen 5 1600, and is pushing under just 40% at worst against the two Intel parts here. Overwatch is another title I've swapped out as it was requested by many of you in our Discord and in the comments. It's tested over a two minute period of a replay from a quick play match as Reinhardt in the most chaotic of a situation as I could find. The settings here are all low except for textures which are at medium, 
the FPS is limited at a max of, of 400 FPS. Here we see the 5600X near the FPS cap with just over 340 and a 99th percentile very close to 240 FPS. Our closest competitor here is the 11600K which does a pretty good job competing at the 99th percentiles but not so much on average. The 9600K overclock puts out decent numbers compared to its newer generation brothers, however it still trails the 5600X by a 35% gap in the 99th percentiles. The 3600X has one of its poorer showings here, bringing up the rear with the 1600. Now on to PUBG which was tested at high textures in view and everything else set to low. It was tested in a replay in the Pachinki area of Erangel for 2 minutes. So for the first time today we have a case where the 5600X loses out both to the 11600K and the 9600K, with the 11600K getting almost 200 FPS and a 99th percentile of 104. This is along with the 9600K getting 172 and the 5600X getting around 20% slower in this game. This was still the fastest Zen part on the list, with the 3600X keeping close and the 1600 bringing up the rear once again. Now we're on to testing Rainbow Six Siege, one of my favorites. This test is done doing a T-Hunt on Cafe for a two minute run with Ash. It's once again tested at low settings with AA off and the API used is Vulcan. So today we see a much closer grouping than last time which is quite odd comparing to last time where the 3600X was beaten by double. This time the gap is just a mere 54% with the 5600X tracking in over 330 FPS on the 99th percentile and 475 on the average. The 11600K does trail by 35% in the 99th percentile and 25% on the average, and the 9600K trades blows with the 3600X. Finally, the 1600 brings up the rear, although for those on a 144Hz monitor, the 1600 is fine, and I had used the 1700 to play this game for years at a pretty high level. Nearly 180 FPS on the 99th percentile is pretty solid and gives you some room on a real system with stuff like Discord running and some other programs unlike the sterilized test bench system I have running now. Nearing the end of our lineup, we have StarCraft II. It's tested using the CPU benchmark in the arcade for two minutes once the signal is given to start recording. It's tested at low, at 1080p, and this test is just one of the most absolute grinders and is the worst of the worst case scenarios you could run into. Here, the 5600X gets an average of 111 FPS, and a 99th percentile of 24. Closest competitor, once again, is the i5 11600K, which trails by 31%, but beats it out in the minimums by a single FPS. The 9600K tries to keep up at 68 FPS and 19, and the 3600X is bested by over double on the average, and the 99th percentile. And the 1600 struggles pretty hard here, getting 3 FPS and 30 on average. Moving on to our final FPS of the day, we have Valorant. This I've decided to test in the bomb planting part of the training grounds. The test is done for 30 seconds and is tested at 1080p low. This should be a lot closer to what an actual game match would look like and is more realistic than the shooting gallery, although probably still not as demanding as the worst case scenarios in game. The 5600X dominates here and is leading the 11600K by 51% on average and 25 in the 99th. The 9600K is bested by over 65% by the 5600X, and the 3600X gets the same on average as the 9600K, however trails pretty significantly in the 99th, and the 1600 just gets clobbered here. With that said, 144Hz and below users might be just fine with this performance, especially if they're not super competitive. On to War Thunder, for this title we use the Tank Battle CPU test. It's tested at 1080p on low settings. This time the 5600X beats out the 3600X by just around 70% for the 99th percentile and on the average. The Intel chip keeps very close within 5 and 10% here and the 9600K trails by about 25%. The 1600 here is struggling to hit 144 FPS on average. Okay, on to my last test, World of Tanks. This is tested at 1080p medium in the standalone benchmark for three minutes, which is its entirety. The 5600X and 11600K are, are virtually identical in performance. The 3600X gets very close. The 9600K trails by about 30% in the 99th percentile. Okay, so before I hop into the conclusion, uh, I just want to say a part of the reason why reviewers test games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Tomb Raider is because games that I've tested today are constantly being updated and old data doesn't count. Old benchmarks don't count, old ways of testing don't count, 
every patch can change performance so all testing has to just be thrown out of the window in terms of one to one performance. A lot of these games today I had to test multiple times because of map changes, updates making old replays unplayable, or settings just being changed. And as such, each time someone like me would want to do this, it has to be done com compared on an island as a point in time. There's no way to keep data from say a year ago or in a more common way a few weeks ago. It all should be tested within a window of a few days. I bring this up because in the last video I've seen many comments asking why other reviewers don't test these games. These games tested on a deadline would be an absolute nightmare to get done before a product launch. Alright, so on to our conclusion. So looking over all the data, I can say with certainty that the 5600X won with a very strong lead. In originally planning on this video, I thought I might end up just recommending the Intel option just due to availability of the parts. However, thankfully in the last few weeks, the Ryzen 5600X has become increasingly more available in stock. This makes a much more interesting conversation as the 5600X is selling at its retail price of $300 and the 5800X has a price drop to $125 while the i5-11600K is sitting at just at 260 at the time of filming. The 5600X is 21% faster and costs about 15% more than the Intel part. It lost in 13 out of the 15 testing scenarios we did, and won in only a single one. It also lost by over 15% in more than half of them. Also, by comparison, our beloved 1600 lost by over 130% on average. So for gamers who are looking for AAA gaming or are, aren't trying to push 240Hz+, plus, the 11600K is a very good processor. Just, you might wonder why you'd bother picking one up, since AMD has more options in terms of motherboards in pricing and features. You could go all the way up to a $700 motherboard with all the bells and whistles or down to something, say, $70 or $80 that just gets it running. The chip also runs cooler and is a bit better in a lot of day-to-day -day applications. With that said, it's just not a terrible option, it just isn't optimal. So anybody ended up picking up a pre-build or buying one of these on sale, it's not terrible. The 11400 though might provide a better option for users looking to save a buck and get most of the performance there. So overall, I have to say the 5600X is currently the best esports gaming CPU in its class. And the price premium it commands might seem like a lot, but to the truly hardcore, frame-hungry gamer, it's very likely worth it. Shoot, they might even spend the extra money to get a 5800X. Though for those who aren't super into these types of game, your last generation part is probably fine. I know not all of our audience is super into esports titles, though I want this to be a part of a series on different types of games. City builders, grand strategy games, mill sims, and flight sims might be coming in the future as well. Outside of these tests, I've also got a GPU review coming and a guide on tuning Ryzen CPUs. Also, if you like my content, please make sure to check out the merch store, subscribe to our Patreon, which allows you access to our private Discord, and follow me on Twitter. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what your thoughts are if you have any feedback. Thanks a lot for checking out the video, and have a great day.